we open up our mouths and we begin to worship you. God, we acknowledge your presence that you're already here. So God, we open up our hearts this morning to feel your love. That God, that you are worthy, you are sovereign, you are just absolutely awesome. So God, we give our worship to you this morning. So can we just open up our mouths this morning and begin to say something to the Father? God, we love you, we honor you. God, there's no one like you. God, we have searched and searched and searched and we still have not found anybody that compares to your splendor and your awesomeness. So God, we call you holy in this place.
know, it's important at times to give honor where honor is due and to pay attention to the things. And today's kind of one of those days where as we think about five years and we give honor, um, it kind of hurts my heart a little bit that honestly, one of the people that I would say has been absolutely critical and crucial to this church from the very beginning is not able to be with us this morning. Mr. Wally had a procedure and he's in the hospital. And so as a way of honoring him and God's work in him, I'd like for us to corporately pray for him this morning. Um, and so if you would, would you agree with me in prayer right now? Father, we're asking right where Mr. Wally is this morning, would you touch his body? Angels, would you put your arms around him in that hospital bed? Right now, God, would there be a sense of your presence and your peace and your glory in that place? We ask healing, God, your version of healing, whatever that looks like, for you to do a work in that place. And we thank you. Father, I also thank you for our other elders who played such an amazing, crucial part in letting us get to this place. Would you continue to grow us? Would you continue to unite us? Would you continue to have us to have one heart and mind in what it is that you've called us to do in this place? So, Father, we, uh, we find ourselves in an awkward place today. We kind of want to celebrate, but we also know our sinful nature can get the best of us, and it can be about us. So help us, God, to put into healthy perspective what today is. It's fun to see the things that, that, that we've been able to be a part of, but that we would put all glory back in its proper place to you. So we give you, again, just glory and praise, and we push back, God, all things to you. Man put together something a little special to end worship. Most of you will know the song, so you can sing along, but... The song is called, Do It Again. So, the elders looked at me and go, okay, Pastor Mike, so it's been five years. What are we gonna do now for the next five years? And I, in my brilliance, uh, just kind of went, I don't know. So this song kind of says it all for me. It really doesn't matter what we do or what Mike does. The song says, do it again, because he's the one that did it in the first place. Amen? So they put a little montage together. We're going to sing this song with some memories in the background, but asking God now, would you bless us forward that we would keep our minds and our hearts stayed on what he's called us to do. Amen? Sing the song. Do it again.
see five years of faithfulness. That God, whatever you have asked, it has been a yes. So God, in this moment, we thank you for the visionaries that you gave the yes to. So God, we pray for Pastor Mike and Ms. Jen that you will continue to guide them, that you will continue to strengthen them on this movement that we call Church of the Lakes. That God greater is ahead. These last five years have only been a glimpse of what you're about to do in this city. So God, we honor you this morning. That God, even in the bad times, your faithfulness has continued to sustain. God, even in the chaos, your faithfulness has continued to produce harvest. So God, for these next five years, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. the amazing things that are about to come out of this church. So God, we honor you this morning in our worship. God, we thank you for meeting us here this morning. Thank God that we continue to open up our hearts to hear what Pastor Mike is about to speak into our hearts. So God, we love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're so excited that you're here. We're about to go into a time of meet and greet. Go find somebody and say, I'm so glad that you're here. Give them a hug, give them a high five, whatever you feel comfortable. Sitting right here in the middle, right where Maggie's sitting. 
He raised her hand. I said, ladies, I just want you to know, we didn't know you until today, but our prayer team has prayed for you every day for three and a half years because of the faithfulness. And God in his, in his awesome wisdom, sometimes we're so dumb, but in his awesome wisdom, I still had three of Lisa's most recent prayer cards. And I got to give one to each of those ladies as just a moment. And so I just, and boy, yesterday it hit me, that connect card, it really is a way for us to connect. It really is that our prayer team loves praying for you. So if you have prayer requests, please put those on the back. Every Tuesday, our prayer team gets to pray for you. So use that connect card. If you're a first time guest, let us know. We would love, love, love to know uh, that you're here for the very first time. So again, happy anniversary. And I want to do this again because we did this last fifth family, Sunday family worship and it was so much fun. I just want to do it again. So there are six generations here this morning, right? The last place, listen to me, in our culture where all six generations get together in the same place. It's the last place in our culture. So let me introduce you. My zero through 11 year olds, where are you? If you can stand up, stand up. Let's see you. This is Generation Alpha, everybody. All right, Generation Alpha, zero through 11. All right, how about my 11 through 25 year olds? This is Gen Z. Where's my Gen Zers? Stand up, Gen Z. Yeah, yeah, look at Gen Z rapping today. Very nice. All right, you guys sit down. How about my 26 to 40 year olds? Where are my millennials? Come on, millennials. There's the millennials in the house. I'm glad to have you. All right, here's my group, 41 to 55. Gen Xers, where are you, Gen Xers? Yeah, that's the loud crowd right there, for sure. How about 56 to 74, baby boomers? Baby boomers in the house. Very nice, very nice. And how about, how about my builders, 75 plus? We got some 75, we got some builders in the house. Here we go. Cool, man. It is so cool to, to think about. So here, here's a great story of the reality of us thinking something and God having a better plan. Because when we started the church, here are, here's Mike's words. Mike's idea is wrong, but Mike's idea is, hey, we're going to start a church and we're just really going after young people. Um, and so here are my words. I'm sorry if you feel this is rude, but I'm just being transparent. There are plenty of old people churches around here. We're going to go after young people, right? And so we kind of did, or so we thought, until we started looking around, and there was a lot of you here with gray hair. And we asked, why are you here? We know some of you really don't like our music. It's loud and kind of obnoxious. And when he started singing Great Is That Faithfulness, you're just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, no lie. You know you did, right? But here's what happened. Over time, God expanded a vision to understand, no, my church is not supposed to be divided. It is supposed to be multi-generational. It is, it is supposed to be the older teach the younger. But guess what? The relationships have to be established for that to happen. Amen? Which is why we have VBS, Vintage Bible School. And we have teenagers now that will forever have memories and relationship with those seniors that came and participated in that. So we are so, so grateful. I was thinking back as I was thinking, you know, fifth anniversary, I don't know what was said, but anyway. What? Oh, the pictures behind me? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is uh, VBS pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomas, get it, son. He was hungry, right? So, so VBS happened, but here's a quick story. Uh, we, we go to launch the church, and honestly, the, the truth is the story goes like this. Um, I had a pastor say to me, Pastor, uh, pastor Mike, I think you should launch a church. And my honest response, you can call him today and ask him is, I think you should stop smoking dope. I'm not launching the church. And I said it just like that. I'm not launching the church because we know what we're doing, right? We got it all figured out. And I went home and was talking to my wife a couple days later and she said, you really should launch a church. And I said, apparently you go to the same dealer that my friend does. And, um, and God began to work on my heart. And I'll never forget the day that Don Bunker said to me, well, what are you doing? And he and I went to lunch and started to talk about this, this concept, this idea. And then Mr. Wally and Don and I started meeting at Perkins. And some of you guys remember interest meetings in Perkins, right? As a matter of fact, let me give some honor real quick, just for a moment. Don, would you stand? 
Don Buckner, it's one of our elders. One of our original. Where's Marvin? Marvin, stand up. Marvin Burkholder is one of our elders. Of course, Pastor Doug. Is he back there in the back? Where's Pastor Doug? There he is. Pastor Doug's in the back. Rob Nicklein, where's Rob? Rob, there he is right over here. And of course, Mr. Wally that we prayed for today. I, I gotta tell you guys, um, never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that God would bring a team together like this team. It is so fun because there's one guy on the team that he like wants to just like build roller coasters on the high school grounds. He dreams like that. And there's another guy on the other side of the table that counts the pennies of what that would cost to make that happen. And to watch God orchestrate our conversations and to, to get us this, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. But back at the beginning, we had these interest meetings. In our very first interest meeting, um, people came, and I was nervous, you can imagine, because I still had doubt. Like, I don't know if this is supposed to happen. I have said forever, I don't want to be a senior pastor. I want to be a youth pastor for the rest of my life. Like, that's where my brain is and all. But anyway, we've got to have this interest meeting. And I kid you not, y'all, in the middle of my pitch, the room full of people, and in the middle of my pitch, it's our very first interest meeting. Everybody's phone goes off. And I'm thinking, Amber Alert, right, Silver Alert, we have this. No, 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 no. This is the tornado warning that my version of what it means is bend over and kiss your butt goodbye. You know what I mean? Kind of, it was that alarm. You have a tornado on top of you right now in your area. And I thought, I mean, I can't, I just, I remember just thinking, okay, God, you don't have to kill us if you don't want us to watch this church. <laughs> just tell me, right? I, I don't, but it, it's, it's amazing when you stop and you go back. And the, and, and the teaching that God gave me today, because as you can imagine, boy, I felt pressure about today. You only get one chance to do a fifth anniversary. God, what do you want us to hear today? And he gave me these words, don't forget. Don't forget. That night, with the tornado thing, the enemy whispered in my ear, this might be your worst idea ever. And now I get to stand here and look at this and see what God has done. And it's amazing. We started with a group of people that went and launched, uh, went, went visited 12 different churches. We had a great time every, every week going. We went to Tampa and Orlando and Ocala, all these churches that are in the same network that we're in, ARC. And here's something that happened. I had no idea. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. That's the words for the day. You're going to hear me say that over and over again. Don't forget. You know, when you're doing something at the moment and you're just doing what God says for you to do, you don't recognize that there's, there's more to it. There's a deeper meaning, there's something, and there's something we did that became part of the DNA of why we have been the church that gives the way we do. Every one of those churches, now we have not even had a service yet. We got a group of people that are starting to give towards Church of the Lakes, but it's not a lot, but every one of those churches we went to, we wrote a $250 check to give to that church, and that was a big deal for us. You know, like, in the process, we were, I was taking no salary, I mean, we, again, we weren't even meeting yet in the whole process. One of those churches, I, and I'll give honor, Radiant Church in, in Tampa, it's a very large church, waited for about three months after we launched and somebody called me from their staff. Hey, Pastor Mike, we just want to follow up. How's it going? And I'm like, we launched. You know, we're doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> we started on our opening day with 227 people, um, and I preached it down to the second week to 80. But at least we got 80. They, he laughed and we, we kidded. But you know what they did? They turned around and Radiant sent us a check for $500. They doubled the money and gave it back. Don't forget the things that God does. We're, we're going to talk about that, but we had a few different people that I want to recognize today that sent us some videos that I uh, want to put up real quick. Uh, one is, is uh, some of our partners, our missions partners. And uh, we have a missions partner in Germany, Franz and Christy Martins to fully equipped Oasis, and you support them um, in what they do. They're currently launching a church as well, but here's a quick video from Franz, check it out. Hello, Church of the Lakes. My name is Franz Martins, and I'm your missionary to the country of Germany. 
congratulations on your five-year anniversary. I'm really excited to see what God is doing in Leesburg. Uh, appreciate all of you so much for doing what God has called you to do in that city. And because of that, it's allowed me and my wife to come to Germany and plant a church here. In February of this year, we were able to plant a church in the city of Potsdam, a city that is adjacent to the city of Berlin. It's been exciting to see what God is doing there as well as he is drawing more and more people, English speaking internationals from all over the world to join us in uh, instruction from the word and praise and worship to God our Father. So we look forward to seeing what else God has in store as we move forward. We appreciate you guys so much. We are praying for you and we thank God for you. Have a great celebration. We'll see you sometime soon. Bye. Another one of our foreign partners is in Jamaica. So Jesus Way Jamaica is run by Travis and Yvonne Stewart. Travis is a graduate of Leesburg High School, believe it or not. Check this out. Happy fifth anniversary, Church on the Lakes. This is Travis Stewart here in Kingston, Jamaica with Jesus Way Jamaica. Just wanted to just say thank you so much for the partnering with us to be able to see God's kingdom here established in Jamaica. We've been really working diligently with uh, the youth and the church here, um, just going out doing ministry. Um, probably three weeks ago, we ended up taking our youth out to do a outreach in our community. And it was just an amazing time. We had so many of the people in the community that just asked Jesus to come into their life that said, man, you're a blessing. You're an answer to prayer. We didn't have any food. Thank you so much for bringing us food and just the different things that took place. And then even in our own youth's lives, just seeing as they reached out beyond what they had the ability to do, to be able to be a blessing, to be able to pray for people, to be able to speak a word of encouragement to people. It has just been an incredible thing to be watching them grow in the goodness of God. And so again, thank you so much for um, helping us to be able to reach the people here in Kingston, Jamaica. And we wish not just these five years that, that we're glad that they've been an incredible five years for you, but we pray that this next five years will be such a super abundant blessing to you guys and to Leesburg and to the surrounding communities. God bless you. Happy anniversary. If you were here long enough, you'll remember we had a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Miller come from San Diego, California. He's where he's the person who helped us launch our teen center. At the time, he was running the teen centers out in El Cajon, California. In the meantime, he has launched Visit Ministries to help churches launch teen centers. So we are giving to that ministry now. So just so you know, every time you give, uh, not only are you doing a bunch of other things, you're in the process of helping launch teen centers just like Thrive. Here's a quick message from Jeremy. Hello, Church of the Lakes. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jeremy Miller. This last year, we launched Visit Ministries. Our mission is to help churches reach the young people of their communities by training and equipping them to launch their own teen centers. A few years back, I had the great honor of helping you guys to launch your teen center, Thrive. And this year, we have been sharing the story of these teen centers with pastors from all across the country. Right now, we are actively working with several churches to help them launch their very own teen centers. We're expectant that this year, we're gonna see several teen centers launched, including one in Guatemala. So thank you so much for your prayers and support. You are a church that truly carries the heart of the Lord, and you are under an excellent pastor in Pastor Mike Matheny. I'm rejoicing with you guys as you celebrate your fifth year anniversary, and I hope to see you guys again soon. One of the other partnerships that we are blessed to have and support is Care for Pastors. And many of you know when we do our legacy offering, we have a tendency to look for pastors who are hurting or maybe are out of work and it's Christmas time. And so we'll have an opportunity in November to give to find some pastors that we bless. But Care for Pastors is run uh, by one of my pastors and one of our overseers, uh, Ron Cook and Rodetta Cook. Uh, Ron ordained me into ministry and so grateful for the partnership with them. Here's a quick video from Pastor Ron. Congratulations, Church of the Lakes, for five years of fruitful ministry in Leesburg and Lake County. 
on behalf of Care for Pastors, a ministry that your church supports in a very substantial way, thank you. This year, in the first six months, we have had over 255 new submissions for help. That's not including those who are already in our system helping, but because of your support, because of the leadership of Pastor Mike and the elders and yourselves, you are helping us minister to literally hundreds of pastors. You all are a part of our team. So thank you on behalf of those pastors that you're enabling us to offer encouragement to. God bless you as you celebrate. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what God does through the Church of the Lakes in a powerful way. Of course, another partnership that you guys know about that we support is The Rock. So we have The Rock here at Leesburg High School and at Oak Park Middle School, which uh, last year there were uh, 1,600 check-ins in The Rock here just at Leesburg High School. 1,600 times a student checked in, and it could be as simple as, hey, I need a pencil or some kind of school supply, or it could be as crazy as, you know what, I had sex for the first time a month ago and I'm late, what do I do now? And, and we have this opportunity, and Lori Humphreys is our partner here, and she's paid by the school system, but as a believer, it goes to Heritage Community Church that we're in a relationship with, but she made a quick video for you as well. Hi, I'm Lori Humphrey, and I get the privilege of running the ROC program here at Leesburg High School. I want to take this time to say happy anniversary, and thank you so much for the partnership that we have. We are so grateful for the volunteering, for the financial support, and most of all, for the prayer that you offer um, for our program. We have been able to be on campus now for three years, and each year we've been able to support over a thousand students, whether it was for clothing, hygiene, food, school supplies, prom dresses, cap and gown, you name it, from a thing of deodorant to a cap and gown to get them across the stage. I thank you so much for that, and I'm so blessed to be able to partner with Church of the Lakes. Thank you, and have a blessed year. One last one, uh, and, and it's not all of them, but one last one that uh, sent us a video. I'm so grateful for Wanda Cohn over at the Pregnancy Care Center, who works hard to work with young ladies who get pregnant, and uh, we'd like to walk them through the options of how they can still make it, come on, y'all, or that they could actually consider adoption in that process instead of other uh, permanent, less desirable decisions they might make. So here's a quick video from this one. Hello, I'm Wanda Cohn from the Pregnancy and Family Care Center. And this year already, 14 babies' lives have been saved through the faithful servants of the Pregnancy Center. And also 15 moms and dads have come to know Jesus as their Savior. Just this last month, we had six ladies baptized. So we want to thank you for your support and your commitment to making a difference in the lives of our community. Thank you. Another check you wrote, church, so you know, is uh, just recently, uh, it's still sitting on my desk, I've got to bring it over here to uh, Principal Randolph, but $1,000 check that we've written to help support our teachers coming back to school. And on Wednesday, I was asked once again to address the Leesburg High School staff in, in their what, a week back in that whole process. Amen, absolutely, right, that good stuff. But here's what God said to me, don't forget where you started. Don't forget where you started. So here's a start, you ready? I was sitting in, a, in, in an old office in the, the in the Tropic Theater, and those of you who remember that little office in the Tropic Theater, you put two people in there, and it felt like y'all were like intimate or something, you know, like it, it was this big, right? It, like it was tiny. And I was in that office, and I got a call from an old youth who had walked away from God for a number of years, and it was one of those, man, I gotta get my life straight, blah, 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 and I said, come down and meet me at the theater. He comes in the back of the theater, where the, old, where the little office is. Now, I happen to be in the theater on the stage working on something. So he walks in and he's looking around for me. Now, here's the story of the theater. The theater is owned by a dance company. So every afternoon, there are dancers. Can you picture without me having an appropriate description of what dancers look like for rehearsal. Anybody? Skintily clad, maybe? Kind of, you understand what I'm getting at, right? Yes. And what Terry would do, the owner, is when Bike Fest came, she turned it into a bar. So our church was a bar. So for the couple weeks leading up to Bike Fest, all down our hallway, I'm talking 
floor to ceiling. People will tell you I'm not making this up. Cases and cases of beer. Alcohol up down the hall. So this kid who calls me shows up in the hallway. And I'm not there. And here come all these little girls running around their little leotards. And here's the beer. And he finally finds me. We sit down in the office and he goes, that's right. I, I think I want to work here. <laughs> I bet you do, big boy. I bet you do. But you know, God said to me, don't forget. Don't forget where you come from because where you come from defines something. It created a DNA and here's the DNA. Your church is going to be a get your hands dirty church. Your, your, your church is going to be those people that put their hands on the unlovable and put, and put their hands on those that nobody else wants to deal with and get into the mix of dealing with theirs. Something else that God said to us is wonder precedes the word. Wonder precedes the word. In other words, if you make people wonder why you're doing what you're doing, why are y'all in a high school? You're a big enough church, why don't you build a building? You, you know, you're a big enough church, you can do this and that. So I had Lizzie pull this list for me, and any of you, you're welcome to, to see this list. But I, I wish you could see it up close, but this is front and back, and it's just list after list. You know what this is? This is everything that you have given over five and a half years. Let me give you a total. You ready? Eight hundred and twenty-four thousand one hundred and thirty and fifty-seven cents. Over eight hundred thousand. Why do we do what we do? Because this is what God has called us to do. Wonder precedes the word. So here's my message for today. I'm going to do this really, really quick. We're going to finish today and go have some great food. How do we? How do we do this? And, and God sent me back to the story of the Israelites. And, and those of you who remember the Israelites, they wandered around in the desert for a while, a long while. And then finally they got to go into the promised land. And in Deuteronomy 4 and 9 it says this, only be careful, these are important words. How many of you know success can be dangerous? How many, how many of you know that, that wins and victories are, are awesome but they can lead you in a wrong direction or in an unhealthy place? So it says, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that, look at the words, you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart. Who has God called us to be? What has he called us to be? Teach them to your children and to their children after you. Here's the words that I wrote down. Success can breed ingratitude. Right? We can, we can break our arm patting ourselves on the back. We, we can look at all these great things. Can, can I ask you to, to change your verbiage? Would you please stop telling people how great your church is? Your church is filled with hypocrites that have only been saved by the grace of Jesus. Right? That's, the, the, the reality is, is, is we're, we're nothing without God. And if we get to the place where we let success get us to a point where we're clapping too much for ourselves, we can get to an unhealthy place. Come on, y'all. We, here, here's my fear. I have a healthy fear. I think it's a healthy fear. It's a fear that one day I'm going to wake up and we would just be another church. That we would forget where we came from. That we would forget our assignment. That we would forget who we are. That we would get too comfortable. So grateful I sat in Bill and Jenny Frazier's house yesterday for a few minutes. And Mr. Bill, one of our seniors, right? Who, and I'll say this lovingly and he'll laugh. Who doesn't like our music? And he wants some hymns, and we've had multiple conversations about hymns, right? But he's sitting here this morning. And here's what he said to me yesterday. He said, Pastor Mike, because I was talking about five years and this and that, he said, please don't build a building. And I thought, wait a minute, this is one of our seniors, one of our older seniors, who, who has got to come in an old theater and goes to ABF and sits in uncomfortable seats and struck and why did he say this? And he said, because it is so awesome the way that we can give to the community. Church, don't forget who we are. Don't forget where we came from. Let me ask you a question. Are you grateful for what God is doing here? Are you? Me too. But I just don't want us to wake up one day 
and forget where we came from because we're getting accolades. Here's a certificate from Governor DeSantis' office. Certificate of recognition to Church of the Lakes for your involvement in the faith and community-based initiative, your frontline service, and your commitment to the vulnerable populations of Florida. That's awesome. Yeah, you can clap, but listen to me. But be careful where your heart goes with this. Are you, are you tracking with me? We've got to remember, don't forget who we are. Don't forget where we came from. And so I want to give you really quickly three ideas, and then I'll, I'll stop talking. But I want to give you three ideas to help us not forget. Number one, we are not a great church. We serve a great God. We are not a great church. We are not great people. Come on, y'all. I know Mike. Come on, don't you know you? I know what Mike thinks. I know the tacky things that go through my head. We're not a great church. We serve a great God. And, and I get this question often. Pastor Mike, how did y'all do this? And I think that's twofold. I think they know me well enough to go, how in the world did you do this? hurts my feelings. No, I'm just kidding. But two is really, how are y'all in a public school and how do you do this? And here's the answer. We didn't do this. We didn't do this. We have just been given the responsibility to steward a movement that God is doing. Amen? Don't tell people how great your church is. Please. Tell them how great your God is and what he's allowing this crazy group of people to do. You hear the difference? I just, I, we, we've got to make sure that we keep our minds straight because what I've seen happen and I've done it myself in churches that grow to a certain point and we lose vision and we forget who we really are. We're not a great church. We serve a great God. It's not what we did or what we do. It's about us listening and obeying. I'll say it to you this way. I typed in my notes. We are not strategists. We are opportunists. Strategists sit around a table and come up with ideas of things to do and then ask God to stamp them with his approval. Opportunists say, God, what are you paying attention to? God, what are you doing? Where are you working and how can we get involved? We are not strategists. We are opportunists. Tomorrow, listen to me, church. We're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. There's journals back there. I'll be on 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll to see you there. And, and why are we doing that? Because we've got to keep our heads straight. Then it doesn't matter if this if this 800 seat auditorium gets packed out. There's 400 people here this morning, by the way. If you're curious, it, it doesn't matter if we get to five and six and seven or a thousand people or we've got 17 services going on. We cannot lose our minds. We cannot forget and humble our hearts and ourselves to understand this is God's work. It should never be about best church practices or best business practices. It's about hearing God and doing the things that he's paying attention to. Listen to me. This is not false humility, but we are just not this good. We're not this good. This is what God is doing, and it's a movement of Him. So join us as we go into this season of trying to hear God in 21 days of prayer. God, what is it that you're doing? Anybody else want to see what God has next? Anybody? How do you, I, I, don't you know that we can screw that up? Don't you know that we can push our own agendas and our ideas, and now we've got more people and, and more money to do things with, and we can look... No, 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 no. We serve a great God, and we're going to take 21 days to focus on hearing Him and doing what He says. Next week, we're going to start a new series called Being Spirit-Led. What does it look like for us to walk with the Spirit? Let's get back to the basics of what makes this thing, Church of the Lakes, work. We need God. You need God. You're not good enough to be a husband. You're not good enough to be a wife. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have or how much experience you have. You need God at work. You need God in your neighborhood. You need our God and he is great. Amen? Deuteronomy 6 and 10, it goes on. When God, your God, ushers you into the land he promised. Here they go. They're going into the promised land. And I kind of look at it like, 
you know, God's ushering us into a season where we have more than average. When he ushers you into the land of the promised land through your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can I stop right now? We need to give honor. Church of the Lakes stands on the shoulders of hundreds of men and women who have gone before us. Plowed the soil here in Leesburg. Had prayer vigils like we're going to have for our schools coming up next week that I hope you'll be a part of. It's on our events page. Check it out as we're praying over the schools. Cindy Brock, pastor of Heritage Community Church, who is one of our overseers and married my wife and I. Cindy Brock used to have an office on this campus years ago as a youth pastor. He plowed ground. We stand on the shoulders of Cindy Brock today. We stand on the shoulders. When we launched this church, many of you don't know this, I went to pastors who had been pastors in Leesburg 25 plus years. Scheduled lunches, scheduled coffee, scheduled time. And I went and sat down and said, Pastor, I'm going to be a new senior pastor. Talk to me. What is it that you have done and have not been able to complete? What is it that you see you need in the community? Why? Because we're not the smartest people on the planet. We just need to take the baton and carry forward what it is. that. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We're not a great church. We serve a great God. It goes on. You're going to walk into large auditoriums. Bustling cities you didn't build. Anybody build this auditorium in here? Anybody give a dime towards this auditorium in here? But here we are occupying it. You come upon wells that you didn't dig, furnished houses you didn't buy, vineyards and olive orchards you didn't plant. And when you take it all in and settle down, pleased and content, Make sure, here it is is again, make sure you don't forget how you got there. Church, let's continue to seek God's presence over our own efforts. Amen? Number two, don't forget, we we are a next steps church. We are a next steps church. We are not an event church. We don't just carve out an hour and a half for Sundays. We believe that God has great things for us. We believe that God wants us to continually grow and to do a work inside of us. Please hear this. He is not done with you yet. He's not done with you yet. He has more for you to do. Many people praying in prayer, they pray a prayer and settle for fire insurance. Right? We just pray a prayer. Well, I'm good. Me and God are good. I'm just going to try to survive life now. You are not meant to survive. You are meant for significance. You are created purposefully, right? The amazing message that you need to hear is that your life can change and there's more for you to do. We are here to grow. Can I say to this to you today? Please start Life Steps next week if you haven't done it. It's not just something extra to do. It is the journey. It is to come join me for Life Steps. Step one is next week, right after church. Come and be a part of that. 1 Peter 1 and 17, since you call on a father who judges each person impartially, Live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. In other words, I'm concerned that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. What I've been designed to do. 1 Peter 1 and 17, same words, words, but written differently. You call out to God for help and he helps. He's a good father that way. But don't forget, he's also a responsible father and he won't let you get a Bible, Bible sloppy with. We are a next steps, church. There's more for you to do. So let me say it to you this way. You can go to heaven and be mean. You can be a mean person that goes to heaven, but you don't have to be a mean person that goes to heaven. You can grow. There's there's something that God wants to do in you. You can go to heaven with an okay marriage, but God can make your marriage better. 1 Peter 1 and 18, your life is a journey. You must travel with a deep consciousness of God. So it's easy to define success in church by nickels and noses, dollars and people. But for five years, we've told you this. We want you to know God. We want you to find freedom in your life. We want you to discover purpose so that you can make a difference. It's all throughout scripture. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. Say it to you this way, give us a year of your life. Give us a year and go all in. I'll make this promise. You ready? You give a year and go all in. What I mean by that is you go through life steps, you get on a dream team, you get plugged into small groups. You do that for a year, and if your life doesn't change, I'll resign and go to the next church with you. Because it ain't going to happen. 
I'm telling you. Matter of fact, it won't even take a year. Give us a year of your life. We're a church that is all about the next steps. Last one. Don't forget. Don't forget. We don't go to church. We are the church. We don't go to church. We are the church. Going to church is a very small part of who we are. The church does not exist for us. The church exists for the world. We don't exist to come together in kumbaya. Come on, y'all. We exist to get out and get our hands dirty and touch the world that we're called to. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is part of it. You know what? If I cut off my finger, if I cut off my pointer finger, I can still pick stuff up, right? I mean, I still shake your hand. It might feel a little weird. It'll still work, but how many of you know it works better with it there? Same is true of the church. When the people plug in and become the part and play the part they're supposed to, it just works better. We are not spiritual consumers. We are spiritual contributors. We're here to make a difference. Let me close with one last verse. Don't forget. Don't forget. We're going to celebrate today. We're about to go eat. Miss Jean made this killer cake. Wait till you see this cake that's over there. And there's all kinds of food, and we've prayed all the calories out of it, so eat as much as you want. Clean probably didn't work, but we tried anyway. But here's my point. Church, please don't forget. Please don't forget. Please don't let's wake up one day and just be another church. Let's take the next 21 days and push in. There's more God wants to say to us. There's a humility that needs to come in our souls and in our hearts. This is not a great church. We serve a great God. We're a church of next steps. I, I need to grow. I, I, I need to move forward. If we don't go to church. We are the church. Look at this last verse, Colossians 1 and 11. As you live this new life, we pray that you will be strengthened from God's boundless resources so that you will find yourself able to pass through any experience and endure it with courage. I really think that's talking about the election cycle. Right? You are able to be able to thank God in the midst of pain and distress. Because you are privileged to share the lot of those who are living in the light. You are privileged to share the light. You, you are lucky enough to be one who lives in the light. Because Jesus loves you and called you. And you respond to him. For we must never forget that he rescued us from the power of darkness. Come on, somebody. About the moment that we start to think that our stuff doesn't stink, we've lost it. He rescued you. He rescued me. And we should be humbled by that. And he reestablished us in the kingdom of his beloved son. That is the kingdom of light. For it is by his son alone that we have been redeemed have had our sins forgiven. Anybody grateful for that this morning? Amen. Don't forget. Don't forget. We're not a great church. We serve a great God. There's a lot of work to be done, church. Anybody? We're just getting started. I don't say that pridefully. I say that because I know my God is big and he has big thoughts. Ephesians tell me that they are extravagantly more than I can think or imagine, right? But the only way we, Church of the Lakes, continue down this journey of seeing God open and doing things is making sure we keep our hearts in the right place. Humble, surrendered to Him, paying attention to what He pays attention to. Amen? Join me for the next 21 days, church. Let's push in. Let's take the, the next hour, hour and a half and go celebrate and have some fun. But then we got to get to work. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for five years. We're humbled. Why you use us, I have no idea. <laughs> but you are gracious. God, we admit our tendency towards pride. We, we admit our, we like certificates from the governor. So we humbly come today, God, and say, put ourselves back in the proper mindset. We, we've done nothing but steward. And Jesus, I hope you're happy with the way we have stewarded what you've given us. But we need you to steward tomorrow. 
to steward the next five years you've put in front of us. So over the next 21 days, as we push in and we seek you, would you give us ears to hear your heartbeat, what it is that you want to do in this community and through this body of believers. Praise you, we honor, glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to close with a song. But in the middle of the song, we've got five baptisms today, y'all. Five people get baptized today. So the team's going to sing, take a little break at the bridge. We're going to shift down here and do baptisms. Then we'll finish out the song. As soon as we're done with the song, you are welcome to be dismissed and go out and head out to the cafeteria. If you didn't register today, come on. We got you. Come on. We'd like you to come and be a part. So, so we're going to go out the backside. And, uh, and, and when you get into the cafeteria, I want you to go in and sit down. We've got a couple of announcements, a couple of things we're going to do as we get started. Uh, but come and join us as, as we take a little time to celebrate. Stay on your feet. Let's worship a little bit. Baptism candidates, you guys can come on down.
baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Your hands and your feet 